The Lego Movie 2, the second part, is the continuation of the 2014 original Lego Movie. Stars the voice talents of Chris Pratt and Elizabeth Banks, and Will Arnett as Batman. I'm going to try to keep this relatively spoiler-free because it's hard to talk about the second movie without spoiling the first one, and since the first film in this series was one of the more surprising children's movies I've ever seen, at least in the last 10 years, I want to keep it kind of fresh for you guys if you haven't seen it already. This movie picks up right where the last one left off. Everything is awesome, but then all of a sudden, things aren't. All of Emmett's friends get abducted, they're taken to a faraway solar system, and the entire movie is Emmett's quest to get them back. And because this is a continuation of a first movie, this is just more of the same. That might sound like criticism, but it's actually a great attribute of this film. I love the Lego movie, so giving me more of that is never going to be a criticism. Lord and Miller's writing is just on point here. The jokes come fast and furious, and there's a ton of puns and visual gags that just keep the movie moving along at a very brisk pace. And they don't reinvent the wheel here. This is the same funny, character-driven piece on the surface that has an underbelly that has a strictly human element to it. And the movie was entertaining. I will tell you guys that this movie was not written for a pandemic, but there are a few songs in this movie that feel tailor-made for it. it. I got a little misty-eyed, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, solid sequel, doesn't reinvent the wheel, but didn't really need to. The basis they were working off of was pretty great. Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets stars Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne, and the movie was directed by Luc Besson. First, the good. This movie has some interesting sci-fi elements. It has some ideas that are well played out and are interesting. The movie also looks amazing, like it is Avatar level visuals for most of its running time. There are some amazing set pieces that look great. But having said that, the rest of the movie is a freaking mess. Dahan and Delavine have absolutely no chemistry at all. He is written as the Han Solo type. She is written as the Carrie Fisher Princess Leia type. They have very quippy dialogue, but none of it lands and all of it is Bad. This is a 2 hour and 15 minute movie that feels like a 4 hour and 58 minute movie. Most of that is due to the plot making zero sense. It doesn't make sense to us, the viewers. It certainly doesn't make sense to the characters. Every set piece within itself has a certain sort of logic to it, but the overall arc of the film is non-existent. They are doing missions to be doing missions and it just kind of leads to a place. The bad guy, I think, is supposed to be mysterious and not treated as a bad guy, but the movie makes it abundantly clear from the onset that he is the bad guy. But we don't know what his plans are or what his goals are for most of the running time, or even what the conflict is for that matter. And this movie really goes into some weird areas. Rihanna is in this movie. She plays a creature made of slime that can morph into any of the other characters in the movie. She has a musical number slash strip dance? Pole dance? It's really weird. And that leads into a fashion show. None of this feeds into the major plot. The MacGuffin of the film is a creature that if you feed it one of something, it will then poop out thousands of that something. Cara Levine's character uses it to make more diamonds. That scene ends with a quip, which isn't funny and doesn't work. This movie just meanders throughout its entire running time, and it sucks too because there's cool concepts there, but it never becomes a cohesive package throughout its entire running time. It's bad. This movie will have its audience. It will find an audience, but it's because it's gloriously bad. Tread is a 2019 documentary film about the life of Marvin Hemeyer, and I like how this movie evolves throughout its running time. As the movie starts, Marvin is new to the city in Colorado. He has started a welding business, 
and he feels like the city government, since he's the new guy, is coming down on him extra hard in regulations and rules and laws for him to make this new company. And you hear through audio tapes he recorded his frustration with the city government. Marvin is also angry that the city has relegated some of the property next to his business for a concrete company. And through all these stages, Marvin seems like the hero of the story, the underdog, the guy fighting the system. Then the movie morphs into its second act, where you realize that Marvin is imagining most of these problems. Things come up where he was given the opportunity to get out of each of these situations, and he didn't take it. And through these audio tapes, you hear him getting angrier and angrier as he talks about these situations. It all escalates into a 2004 incident where Marvin purchased, tried to sell, and failed at doing so, a bulldozer. Being a master welder, Marvin fortified this bulldozer with steel and concrete and a 50 caliber gun and took the bulldozer on a rampage throughout this small Colorado city. He is just again headed westbound into the downtown area. Right there may have taken out a radiator. He doesn't stop for light poles. He doesn't stop for buildings. He takes out the corner of the copycat store. Again, this is right in downtown Granby. And then the gamble store next to this became another prime target. He backed up while the radiator smoking. While he has any power left, he's going to attack that gamble's appliance store. No one was killed in the incident. But that doesn't keep the final act of this movie from being heartbreaking and absolutely captivating. This is a hard thing to make a documentary about because there's not a lot of video footage of the time. The incidents leading up are all done through recreations, which normally I don't like to see in a situation like this, a documentary like this, but here it works because you have to lay out the argument for why this man did this uh, and you can't do that with video footage of his mental state because it just doesn't exist. The final act is told through the eyes of the police officers who were trying to stop him and warn the townspeople of where he might be going next. But it's told through those cops eyes and they do a great job of laying out bit by bit where they were, who came by next what happened. It's a very compelling story and heartbreaking for everyone involved. Property was damaged, lives were changed forever, and everything seemed preventable. But a well-told, thoroughly electric documentary, uh, I enjoyed it. It was an incident that was completely forgotten about by the public at large, mostly because the day after it happened, uh, President Reagan died. So it was kind of pushed out of the news cycle. But it's a great film to show the ins and outs of this man's mental state and an incident that changed a ton of people's lives.